the Miami Dolphins haven't done Tua Tungavailoa any favors and if your focus is solely on the offensive line, you would be wrong. There is so many things wrong with the Miami Dolphins offense but Tua Tungavailoa remains the bullseye on the dartboard. Will that change in 2022? Mike McDaniel believes there is untapped talent with Tua and he believes that offensive coordinator Frank Smith and quarterback coach Daryl Bevel can bring that out of him. McDaniel says publicly that he sees something in Tua Tungavailoa and that there is something there to work with but while fans and media criticize the young signal caller, there is far more going on that isn't controlled by Tungavailoa. Everything wrong with Miami offense existed when Ryan Fitzpatrick was the quarterback. It existed with Ryan Tanhill and probably even Chad Henney if we wanted to go back that far to really dive in and look knowing what we know today. Tungavailoa is not without his problems and he sure hasn't done himself many favors. From poor decision with the football to bad throws at bad times, and laying an egg in his biggest game of his career, against the Titans last season, didn't help. Here are some of the real reasons why Tua has struggled and what Mike McDaniel needs to change in his first year with the Dolphins. Why? Because if he can't, Tua likely won't be around for the following season. No coaching support is a problem. Coaching has been a problem and that can't be denied when it comes to Tua Tungavailoa. Brian Flores or Chris Greer? Take your pick when you want to blame someone for the Deshaun Watson garbage. Flores wouldn't commit to Tua and Greer sidestepped the questions. This wasn't something that was a simple topic leading up to the trade deadline. The Watson rumors began to circulate prior to the NFL draft last year. It ramped up again as training camp started and it only got worse as the trade deadline got closer. Miami's seven-game losing streak turned into a seven-game winning streak. Not coincidentally after the trade deadline passed and the talk of Tua being traded or benched died off. It wasn't just the negativity in the press surrounding the Watson trade rumors. Tua has been in the NFL now for two seasons. He has had some of the worst offensive coaching that the Dolphins have seen. Chan Gailey, Eric Studsville, and George Godsey, the two-headed offensive coordinator's approach last year was a joke. Add in the quarterback coaching of Charlie Fry and of course the rumors of him calling plays as well. No matter what you think of Tua, you can't dismiss the problems with the coaching staff, including Brian Flores. Yes, the offensive line bad. The Miami Dolphins' offensive line has been cursed since Jonathan Martin stormed out of the team's dining room because Richie Incognito ate the last biscuit. Okay, that entire situation wasn't funny at the time but the offensive line has been horrible. Last year, the Dolphins' line finished at or near the bottom in just about every statistical category that included run blocking, sacks, pressures, and pass protection. Say what you will about the seven-game winning streak, the defense was really the force behind that elevation and while Tua was playing much better, the offensive line was not. It will be interesting to see if Mike McDaniel can fix this unit with new O-line coach Matt Applebaum. On paper, he may be the best line coach Miami has had in a decade. Maybe, but on paper, he definitely is the best coach Miami has had in the last three years. There have been four of them. McDaniel and Applebaum have to decide who can be molded. Austin Jackson, Solomon Kindley, Robert Hunt, Liam Eikenberg, Michael Dieter, and a few others are still really young and could do well with better coaching but at the same time, they may discover these guys are not it and if that is the case, they will need to replace them. Can they get a feel for this group before the draft? Before free agency? They need to. Top 3 receivers and only one a wide receiver. Entering last season you would have thought that the Miami Dolphins had the best wide receiver group in the entire NFL. Now, we look back and see that Tua Tungavailoa had one of the worst and Brian Flores and his offensive staff couldn't see that. What is amazing is that we are a year removed from that incredible paper unit and ready to replace just about all of them. From free agency to the draft, finding more wide receiver is paramount for the Dolphins' offense and the development of Tungavailoa. In 2021 his top receivers were Jalen Waddell and Mike Jasicki. Waddell set an NFL record with 104 and Jasicki was a distant second with 73. The next closest receiver was Miles Gaskin who is not a wide receiver. Then again, Jasicki is supposed to be a tight end. More amazing is that Jasicki was targeted 1-1-2 times and Waddle 140. Devontae Parker was next in line with 73 targets and then Gaskin with 63. Parker had only 40 receptions on the season. The rest of the wide receiver? Albert Wilson had 39, Mac Hollins 28. The wide receiver in Miami offense last season were non-existent outside of Waddle and the team's tight end. With Preston Williams and Albert Wilson hitting free agency along with Will Fuller, the Dolphins need to get better and in doing so will give Tua, hopefully, real targets in the passing game. You can't pass if you can't run. 
If Miles Gaskin was one of the top receivers on the Dolphins roster then you would think that his contributions in the running game would make a difference. He rushed for 612 yards in 10 games, that is actually impressive given the line play and missing 7 games. Consistency was and remains the biggest problem. Miami lack of a consistent rushing attack does not do Tunga Vailoa any favors. Defenses were able to take away much of Miami passing attack and yet when Tunga Vailoa was playing well, it didn't matter what the defenses did. A running game would take the stacked coverages away. Miami rushing game hasn't been good since Ronnie Brown and Ricky Williams ran the ball and the Dolphins have been on binge of drafting runners on day three of the draft in a plug-and-play system. They have consistently passed on top running back talent in the draft. While they have had marginal success with players like Lamar Miller, Gaskin, and some others, these backs typically don't last long and don't make major impacts for more than a season at best. The time is now. The task of Mike McDaniel is also the task of Chris Greer. Find better coaching, that may or may not have been done by McDaniel. Find a better offensive line, something we as fans are hoping to see this offseason. Chris Greer has publicly said at the NFL Combine that the Dolphins' plan for free agency is to be aggressive but how aggressive will they be on the offensive line? Will they replace Jesse Davis on the outside? Will they find a new center or a new guard? Will they attack the position in the draft? Or will they simply assume that Applebaum can turn the current group into a solid unit? Greer and McDaniel need to fix the receivers unit and they will have plenty of opportunity to do so. Greer has a habit of signing injury-prone players who he thinks are bargains. Will Fuller at $10 million was not a bargain and Miami is wasting money on Alan Hearns. Changes need to be made and through all of it, Tua Tungavailoa himself needs to improve but before we put Tungavailoa under the microscope by himself, we need to remember that very few if any quarterback would have elevated the Dolphins' offensive problems last season. Tungavailoa may not be the answer and the Dolphins are about to find out. At least they should be finding out. Fixing some of these problems will give the Dolphins a better idea of what Tua is and what he isn't. Fixing these problems now, this year, will give the Dolphins a full year to decide whether or not they need to replace Tua in 2023 and my guess is, if he can't improve, drastically, they will absolutely do just that, and should.